Rich, uh, let's be joined by somebody who worked about 500 feet from where Mark is standing right there, Ari Fleischer, Fox News contributor, former White House press secretary. Good to have you, Ari. Good morning. Good so, morning. So what do you make of the fact that it sounds like Sweden is going to be in as soon as possible, and now Ukraine is steamed that they're not next on the list? Yeah. Everything backfired for Russia, thank goodness. When Russia decided they could take Ukraine, and then the Western alliance has actually been strong and effective, that is the best thing that could happen to Russia. And this is what Russia feared the most, that they'd have NATO close up on their border increasingly in the number of countries. Everything's backfiring, thank goodness. Right, and Russia's weighed in. They said, well, watching everything closely with NATO, disappointed in Ankara's decision to greenlight Sweden. But he says, notice that Turkey is not allowed into the EU. They'll never accept you. We are going to try to fortify our relations there. And it seems as though everyone in NATO has made Russia the enemy. Your thoughts about their interpretation? Russia is the enemy. I mean, they attacked Georgia, they attacked Ukraine twice, and now they're admired, they're bogged down, and thank goodness they are. And it's so important for the United States, and I really don't understand conservative opposition to Matt it. Matt Gates. That I do not understand why we're not doing everything in our power to help Ukraine win this war, defeat Russia. Nothing could be better for world peace than a weaker military Russia. They what? don't make that case. They don't. This president does not make that case. He talks almost nothing about this, and he leaves it to people like Tom Cotton and Lindsey Graham yeah. to tell his story. Yeah, I mean, Joe Biden's approach to this has always been kind of like a guy at a sink, just making sure he doesn't get the water too <laughs> hot. And he's just sitting there cranking the water. for. No, help. Ukraine sure. win. Right, and we understand that, but at the same time, the president accidentally revealed in that chat with yes. CNN, hey, by the way, we're out of bullets. Yes. Was it a smart idea to give them all the bullets? Well, no, it is smart. It's the United States industrial base and the what? Western we industrial base to be led by Joe Biden to increase and produce more. Yeah. But this is a rare moment. This is a rare moment to take down militarily an adversary. You don't let that pass. You prevail. And the United States and the West has an obligation morally and in our own national interest to take down Russia in Ukraine. You know, Democrats are probably saying he's going to be our candidate because he beat Donald Trump before. We feel like he might be able to pull it off this time. But it's story after story, not only Afghanistan withdrawal, but also when you look at him at um, Windsor Castle yesterday and the king has to tell him where to go. We see him falling on the stage. We see him falling off the bicycle. We hear that he's not acknowledging his seventh grandchild. Um, it's just adding up. I don't know yeah. if he'll be able to win, but then look at the headline today on the New York Post. It says old yeller. Not only saying that he's old, but he's a yeller because uh, some of his staff telling Axios that he cusses behind the scenes, that several of them have to, they don't want to go in and talk to him one on one. They want to take two or three people with him because they're worried they're going to be screamed at, that he's uh, saying F you and F this and, you know, that kind of thing in the Oval Office. You know, I didn't mind the king showing Joe Biden where to walk. I mean, that's a courtesy and the United States presidents do it for foreign dignitaries when right. they come to the White House. What I did mind was the other thing, which was the pictures of Joe Biden at the beach. He's barely able to walk in the sand. And now we see him walk on a stage with that terrible stutter step, walking out to the helicopter. All these pictures add up. Now, the story about him yelling, I don't mind bosses who swear. I, I don't swear. I don't like that. But if a boss does, that's their style. But what I did mind is the hypocrisy of Joe Biden on day one saying, I'll fire anybody who treats staff badly, and then he treats Ari, staff badly. Ari, we've got that sound bite. Watch this. I'm not joking when I say this. If you're ever working with me and I hear you treat another colleague with disrespect, talk down to someone, I promise you I will fire you on the spot. On the spot. No ifs, ands, or buts. Everybody, everybody is entitled to be treated with decency and dignity. That's been missing in a big way the last four years. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, if, if his style is to swear, okay, so what? But then don't be a hypocrite. But right. you know what? You know what's blowing me away is how the armor has left. The investigation's hitting turbo speed. It's mm -hmm. very hard to turn away from it, and I think it's going to pick up even more as Chris Ray goes to uh, goes to hearings tomorrow. And now you have the story of his seventh grandchild, Maureen Dowd, writes the story. And then on The View, uh, they go, well, you know, we'd be covering this if it was, if it was uh, Donald Trump. And then you have Dana Bash on CNN come out and say, it's really problematic to disavow your seventh grandson. All this stuff just got buried, like the Hunter Biden laptop. You understand communications and the weather vane of the media more than most. 
Why do you think this is happening now? I don't know that it got buried, Brian. I, I think we've lived in an era now for the last 10 years where stories spike up and spike down, spike up and spike down. But there's been a cumulative effect on Joe Biden. This is, he's been mired in a bad summer of bad stories. And the story about his seventh grandchild, I don't think anybody really votes on the basis of the president's children's behavior. But I do think, and I've thought this about Joe Biden because I've known him for so long when he was in the United States Senate and I worked in the Senate, he's just not a good guy. I don't know why the press treats him or thinks he might be a good guy. Maybe it's in comparison to Donald Trump, and we know the press's view about Trump. But Joe Biden's just not a kind, nice guy. He's not. But, but he's portrayed totally different, which is problematic. If you're portrayed like Bobby Knight, a guy with a temper, you know yes. that's what you get. But you get wins. And then if you're portrayed as a guy that's this nice guy that's going to bring stability uh, and honesty to the White House, uh, and he's totally the opposite in real life. People feel duped. What? He's quick tempered and, you, and he's weird. Yeah, why do you? That's what the article says. That he's quick temper. He's weird. But he's remember weird. when constituents at meetings say something to him, he challenges them to a yeah. push-up hey, contest. Fats. Yeah, and he gets in people's face with a with a venom. It's you know, not as if it's calculated. Like just like our grandfather, and then he wears the aviator, so people think he's nice. He kind of jokes around a little bit with the press, but when you really get to know him, if I talked to a Secret Service agent who said he's not a good guy. That's my point. He uh, snaps at people in a very derisive way. And yet, so much of the press, again, because right. the press has an outcome they prefer, and that's Republicans to be defeated. He called my son an SOB. Yeah, yes, very, there you go. Very famously. Meanwhile, you were talking a little bit about Hunter Biden. Uh, and Hunter Biden's name has been coming up a lot over the last 10 days, ever since they found Coke at the White House. A lot of people have said, well, uh, where was Hunter that day? Turns out Hunter left the day before or something like that. It sounded like they, they might be able to wrap up the investigation by yesterday. Don't think it is yet. They're going to brief Republicans on it on Thursday. But you used to work in the White House where you would have to park stuff in those little cubby holes. Shockingly, no cameras right around there. That's correct. And, and let me say a couple things. Number one, for Corinne Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, it was irresponsible of her to call a reporter's question irresponsible, asking if it could have been the fi Biden's family's cocaine. It's a logical question when the president's son is a self-acknowledged cocaine addict. Right. It was a good question. Um, but two, you know, senior staff doesn't have to go through those procedures. Senior staff doesn't have to check it, anything right. in a cubby. They don't even go through a Mac. I used to park on West Executive Avenue. I wasn't searched by anybody. I didn't go through anything. Senior staff is treated differently. Staff that walks over from the old executive office building and giving a West Wing tour could have walked through there, and people getting a West Wing tour could have walked through This could there. have been a donor. This could be a, That's right. a constituent, a big supporter. It would be very embarrassing. What do you think the odds Whoever are? Whoever was, was a guest know? of the Biden White House or staff. Do you, you think don't we'll get ever in know, otherwise. Do you think we'll ever know the name? Yes, we should. We I mean, should. there's a limited number of people who would get a West Wing tour or be staffers working on a weekend. Every one of them, other than the senior staff who parks at West Exec, mm -hmm. would be on Secret Service register. And then you've got the fingerprints issue. But you just said something important. There are no cameras in the West Wing. Right. And that's just part of how the White House security does its business. They've judged that better way to do it. Um, but I've seen people report this should be easy. There are cameras everywhere. There aren't. Right. And that, uh, that hasn't changed. Ari, right, thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you all. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.